Hey Bulldogs, Chris Brandt here. Thanks for joining me today for this CCNA 2125 five minute video boot camp as we get started on a brand new series of videos here on my YouTube channel. Today we're going to take a look at OSPF passive interfaces and not just the command, but where to use the command. That can be a little tricky and why we would configure passive interfaces in OSPF to begin with. So let's go ahead and hit our five minute clock here and we'll take a look at what's going on with passive interfaces. Because from the beginning of your studies, we talk about eliminating unnecessary overhead. Like at layer two, we want to limit the scope of the broadcast. We don't want broadcast just flying all over our network. Well, that, that's true at layer three, not necessarily with broadcast, but we want to eliminate unnecessary overhead while keeping our necessary overhead because if we take that out, we just might not have a network. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All of this is in OSPF area zero and it's already configured, already up and running. And we've got two network segments. We've got an NBMA network running between routers 1, 2, and 3 over the 172.12.123.0 network. And router 1 has a fast Ethernet interface, 10.1.1.24, that's also been added to OSPF. So right now, after I did a quick check of our neighbor relationships, and you can see that those are in place over the NBMA network, we can go down to router 2, and there's the route 10111 or 10110, I should say. And can we ping router one's interface there? Yes, we can. But let's run that show IP OSPF neighbor command again. And you might notice something a little odd there. We have two adjacencies that we expect to see to routers two and three from router one's point of view, but there are no adjacencies off fast Ethernet zero slash zero. Why? because there are no devices off that interface that can possibly form an OSPF adjacency with router one. We got a layer two switch there, and we got some hosts connected to that switch, but there's no reason to send hellos out that interface because there's no way that we can form an adjacency with a device off fast ethernet zero zero. Thing is, if we take the network command out, then obviously 10110 slash 24 would not be advertised to routers two and three, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of what we're doing here. So what we might do is bring a passive interface into action, but let me show you first how often those hellos are going out. Because you might think, eh, you know, is it really that much extra traffic? Well, the command I've run here is debug IP OSPF hello. And we're going to start seeing some hellos here in a few seconds. You see one here sent to 224.005 from 10.1.1, that coming at the end of the command. And we'll see some hellos received from those other two routers, but you'll notice that we've already sent another hello out. And in a few seconds, as I sit here and talk for a few more moments, we will see another hello go out. Well, let's do a you all, short for undebug all, <clears throat> pardon me, and how, take a look at how often these are actually going out. And since that's a broadcast segment, you're looking at every 10 seconds a hello packet is leaving router one's fast ethernet interface. Thing is, it's totally unnecessary because again, there are no devices out there router one can form an adjacency with. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but that six a minute is 360 unnecessary hellos an hour, 8,640 unnecessary hellos a day, 60,000 unnecessary hellos a week are leaving router one. We would like to eliminate that. And we're gonna do that with the passive interface command. And in OSPF, what a passive interface does is it simply does not transmit hellos. It does not disqualify the interface from running OSPF so that network should continue to be advertised after we make a passive interface or configure one. So we do not do that though at the interface configuration level. What you wanna do is go into your OSPF config and amongst all this stuff, here's passive interface. And the description here in iOS helps suppress routing updates on an interface. Well, with OSPF, we mean hellos. So what we'll do is run passive interface, and then you just put the interface type or which one you want to be passive. So there we go. You shouldn't see any adjacencies drop or anything like that because there were no adjacencies to drop to begin with. We don't see any messages about it and we don't see any neighbors drop or anything like that. Let's go down to router two and run show IP route OSPF. And you can see that that route, you know, it's still being advertised. It's still in router two's table. And if we send a ping up to 10111, 
all is well. But right now, if we run debug IP OSPF hello, let's see what happens. I'm going to let that run a second. I'm going to stop the clock because we're going to go a little past five minutes here with this one. And you see a hello that we're receiving. Of course, those aren't going to be disabled. And since this is a serial interface, we're not sending them out as often, so you're not going to see one every 10 seconds. But you'll also note that I've been sitting here talking about this for about 25 seconds, and what are we not seeing? We're not seeing hellos go out the fast Ethernet interface, but yet router 2 can still ping it because it still has that route in its table. So that is where passive interfaces really come in handy, is a situation just like that. Now let me do a quick you all there for undebug all. One thing that I want to share with you before you go about passive interfaces, you just got to be careful about where you put them. Because if you are configuring this, and let's say you made the serial interface passive on router 1, then you might see some problems. So since this is a lab, we can go ahead and do that. We'll do a router OSP of 1, passive interface, serial 1, 0, clink. And we see a couple of adjacencies go down, interface down or detached. If you see any kind of message like this right after you configure passive interface, you configured the wrong interface as passive. All you have to do is do a no here in front of the same command, and that will make the interface non-passive. And what you will see is the interfaces eventually come back up. This will take a couple of minutes because it's a serial link, but that's all you have to do is put a no in front of it. So just be careful with your passive interfaces. You'll find them to be very helpful. When you have a moment, come on out to the newly refreshed website at thebryantavantage.com. You'll see this guy who looks absolutely nothing like me. And you'll also see plenty of free stuff. Today is April 18, 2017. We're just starting to populate these sections, but we will have something new for you every day, including videos, practice exams, and my famous CCNA command reference, which will be updated for the new exam as well. So come on out and see us when you have a chance. Thanks for dropping by today. I'm Chris Bryant, and I'll see you tomorrow with another 5-Minute CCNA Video Bootcamp.